Hey, seventh grade NTI. Um, I know you've been running your experiments and I was sorry to hear that a couple of you had yours break. We've had a couple here, um, but I had some backups, so we've been okay. And if you have to rerun it, that's fine. That's the way things go sometime in science. Uh, unexpected things happen. It's okay. Just go on and, and start again and uh, you'll just be a few days behind and, and there's nothing the matter with that. Um, so we're going to do another change out today. This is our last solution. So, so far we've uh, put it in vinegar and I'm sure you saw that it dissolved the shell as well as was permeable to vinegar because the vinegar went in the egg and it made the egg larger. So you should have seen that your circumference increased when you measured that. Um, then we put it in colored water and that's the change out I'm doing right now. And so this is the, uh, the one that you guys did yesterday, very likely. Let me grab my empty cup. So the first thing we have to do is retrieve the egg, and you now know how delicate this egg is. Um, and so one of the things that can happen sometimes is when you're using the spoon, you can accidentally poke it. So I always just kind of cover the opening with the spoon so the egg doesn't fall out, but I don't push the egg down at all. And dump off, you'll be using a sink, I assume, and dumping into that, but I don't have a sink. So I'm just gonna dump it into this measuring cup. There we go. And so now all I have in the cup is the egg remaining. And then I just put it in a little tray that has some paper towel in it, just really gently. Here we go. I'm not sure how your all's looked, but man, look at that. Isn't that cool? I mean, it's like ruby red. It's very cool. Anyway, so now we've taken it out of that liquid. And if I were at home or around a sink, I'd rinse this cup out. Unfortunately, we're kind of making do here in the classroom, uh, but I would do that if I were you. And we need to measure to see what our new circumference reading is. And of course, because it's science, we always use centimeters. And I very carefully lift the egg up and slide my measuring tape underneath. And this one now measures 17.1 centimeter, 17.1. And so I would record that in my data table. Now you have a data table on your sheet that you've been using. Uh, to record raw data in, and that's where I would put that. And then you're going to check to see whether it has increased or decreased. And mine actually went up another centimeter. So it started at 14.1, and then when I did the second measurement on it, it was 15.9, and now it's 17.1. So it is permeable to uh, the food coloring and water, and we know it was permeable to the food coloring just by looking at it because it's gotten really red. And so after you rinse your cup, you need to take a couple of tablespoons of salt and place that in your cup. We're making a salt water solution. So there's one and two. And then I'm going to add water to the cup. Notice I'm not putting the egg in yet because we don't want to be stirring with the egg in there. It's just too darn delicate for that. So I'm gonna pull it, fill it about two thirds of the way to have room for the egg. And then I'm gonna to stir to dissolve the salt. And then I'm gonna put the egg back in there and I'm gonna let it sit in there until Thursday. Um, that's about when the other class is going to be ready to do their change out. Uh, if you did yours on Thursday of this past week, yesterday, then you could do your last uh, check on Monday. So they're a little bit behind you, actually. We've had a few things going on here at school. So let me make sure you can see how cool my egg looks. Isn't that neat? All right, I'm gonna drop that back in the cup very, very gently. Here we go, and put the lid back on it and let it sit for a few days to see if it is permeable to salt water. So now I'm gonna kind of switch you around because I wanna to talk to you about the lab report and I don't want you having to read backward writing. So let me switch you here. All 
All right, there we go. And so what we're gonna do now is talk a little bit about the lab report that you're going to do. So you should have started it the first day when you guys zoomed in with us. We had begun the lab report that day. So I'm hoping that you were able to keep up with us and hear well enough to have started that so you don't have quite so much to do now. Move these things out of our way. So you have, you have a paper that I posted for you when we first started this experiment. I can repost this on uh, Monday's post, but um, it's this experiment sheet and it has some important information that you need for your lab report. So uh, if you haven't already, make sure you print this out. And then I will be posting this lab report instruction form. This tells you exactly what that lab report needs to look like. And I'm going to give you a summative grade for that lab report because we've already studied scientific method. And so this will be your chance to show me you know how to use it. So uh, if we look up at the board, these are all the sections you need to make sure you include. Your research question, hopefully you've done that one already. Uh, title, first of all, research question, hypothesis, which is a statement of what you think is going to happen. And it should have a little research behind it. Uh, materials, so listing every single thing that you use throughout the experiment. The procedure you should take straight off the experiment sheet, so copy word for word. You don't want to shorten those. And by the way, I want these to be handwritten. So, uh, you know, take the time to really process all of this. If you uh, do it on the computer, I have a little concern you might copy paste. And I want you to actually go through the steps because in high school and college, you'd have to do that. So uh, you need to copy every step word for word in the procedure. And then you're gonna have your data table that you're gonna copy into the, your lab report. You've probably been collecting data on the sheet here. Totally fine. But you do need this in your lab report. So you're gonna just recopy all of your data there. And then you're gonna have a data analysis and conclusions. Now, if you look over at the screen here, and you're gonna have a copy of this as well, then what you'll see, hopefully, is the uh, middle school lab report form, and this has all the instructions of what should go in there. So it describes what should be in your hypothesis and materials, your procedure. I just told you I want you to write that word for word. Uh, results section, so that's right under your data table. Um, you should include the data table, which you copied from the sheet. Um, you should also explain what it means. You're not gonna have to do a graph for this one because that's not really needed here uh, because you do have really good data in your data table, but you need to explain what you found out. So which solutions was it permeable to? Which solutions was it not permeable to? List the measurements that you took and how that told you whether it was permeable or not. So you need to write a paragraph or two in the results. Now, when you get to the conclusions, there's a bulleted list here, and again, I'm going to post this paper for you. There's a bulleted list of all the things that should be in the conclusion, but one of the things I've done is if you look at the very bottom of the sheet, I've got a fill-in-the-blank conclusion kind of script for you, and that's probably the best thing to use if you haven't done a lot of conclusions. It's not one-word fill-ins, it's phrases. So, for instance, it says, this lab experiment investigated and you would talk about permeability of a cell membrane. In order to study the problem, we used eggs to simulate cells and tested them in several solutions. Uh, my results showed, and so on. So if you fill in the blanks here, you'll have a pretty good paragraph, and I have all the elements that you need for the conclusion. So as soon as you finish the experiment, and I know there's a couple of you that had your eggs break and you had to start again, it's okay, you've notified me. I'm not gonna look for your lab report until a few days later. But everybody else should be wrapping it up Monday and then finishing up your lab report. Once you finish that, I'd like you to take pictures where I can read them because I've got a grade from this, or scans, whichever is easiest for you, and email those, wait for the bell. There you go, and email those to me. And this again is gonna be a summative grade, so good points here. Um, and I do expect those to be to me by the end of the day Tuesday, unless you've notified me that your egg broke, and then I won't look for those until the end of next week. So I hope that this helps you with finishing up the egg experiment, and certainly contact me if you have any questions. I hope you've had a lot of fun with this. I think this is a really cool one. It's really neat to see how the egg changes every time we check it. So. 
I hope you've enjoyed all of this with me. And what a great skill to learn how to write a lab report because you're going to do that a whole lot in science classes in both high school and college.